<laughs> oh my god. <laughs>Hey there guys, my name is Jaden. welcome back to my channel. We just landed at Chicago O'Hare Airport. My dear friend here in Chicago is now driving us to our hotel at the Sheraton Grand Chicago River Walk. I'm already falling in love with the buildings. <laughs> As the hotel name suggests, it's located alongside the river on the north. Okay. Yeah, so this is the river, those people are walking across the river. We just arrived at the property where a bell boy picked up our suitcases and he's gonna bring it to our room later. Our room for the next few nights is 3216. It's a one king bedroom located on the higher floor with a river view. According to Marriott's website, this room is about 330 square feet big or 30 square meter. So here's the king bed. Let's mark our territory. Three, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> My eyes were popping when I saw 72 degrees. I forgot they use Fahrenheit here. There's an alarm clock. On each side of the bed, you'll find a lamp, a very contemporary design, and there's a charging point on it. I like the shiny handle for the drawer. And to close it, you just have to give it a light push. It closes it smoothly. I really like the brown leather straps here. It's totally unnecessary, but it looks good. And I guess that's what five-star hotels are about. In our room, we've got a 47-inch LED TV. You'll find a coffee maker here on the working desk, as well as charging points, pen and paper, and a telephone. There's no kettle here, but you can ask the housekeeping for one. I really like this mirror, it's very contemporary. I like how we've got a general waste bin and a recycling bin. Here you'll find ice bucket, glasses, coffee, tea, and a few Starbucks cups, all beautifully presented. Next to the glass window with river view, you've got a footstool and a sofa chair. So our room is facing towards the west, and that gorgeous looking building is the Trump Tower here in Chicago. It's the second tallest building in Chicago. Some interesting history, Trump announced in 2001 that the building would be the tallest in the world, but then 9-11 happened, the architects had to scale back the building's design. There's a mini fridge, but it's out of service. If you require one for your medication or food and drinks, you can again ask reception for a fridge. Now let's move on to the bathroom, shall we? So here's a bird eye view of your bathroom. You've got a bathtub here with your shower head. It's got a very warm and luxury design here, like the marble floor, marble wall, and the wooden materials. For the towel, we were given three for each set. For shower products, you've got the Pharmacopia brand from San Francisco. We've also got two bottles of water here. Can someone please explain why some hotels like this one leave the water in the bathroom rather than in the room itself? We've got a makeup mirror here and on one side, it's got the magnifying effect. There are two charging points in the bathroom. For the bathtub, the width and the length are okay, but it's a bit shallow. Your shower head is also very tiny and not portable. If you need help to get up, there's a grab bar here. Here's the view at night, it's still as gorgeous. It's now day two, let's go to the club lounge for some breakfast. Every day my cousin and I were like, oh we gotta head to the river for a run, head to the beach for a run. We never did it. And we also did not miss breakfast every single day. If you're eligible for the club lounge access, all you need is your key card. It's self-serve here. The club lounge has plenty of natural lights, high ceiling, and also some plants as well. It's a very beautiful one. From the club lounge, you have a view overlooking the west like our room, and also facing the south as well. I think this club lounge really got the idea of a lounge correct. It's got a homey feeling to it, like how it's got sofa and TV in one corner. So now let's check out the breakfast food selection. 
Disappointingly, it's not that awesome. So you've got your continental food like bread, yogurt and cereal. For hot food, you've only got scrambled eggs. No bacon, no sausages, no hash brown, no baked beans. You can make your own bagel if you want. In the fridge, you'll find still water and soft drinks. You'll find Starbucks coffee and tea in the other part of the lounge, as well as juices, oatmeal and milk. For your tea selection, they offer you Tivana from Seattle, and they've got nine flavors, including, of course, English breakfast, green tea, and chai. American yogurt is so goddamn sweet. I can spend a whole day here in the club lounge having a croissant, drinking tea, and watching TV. Before we head out for the day, I'm going to make myself a chai with milk well, it's to go. It's a gorgeous day here in Chicago. From the Sheridan, it's only a two to three minute walk to the Chicago flagship Apple store. We're now back in our room after a day of activities and our room have been made. Now let's check out some of the facilities in the hotel, namely the gym and the swimming pool. This gymnasium is massive, it's one of the biggest one I've seen. I can imagine in the morning it's very busy. And that's why actually I prefer to use the gym at night. If you need energy and crave for energy drinks, they've got a vending machine just for that. Let's see how much weight I've put on. 75 kilogram, oh my god. I'm actually proud to announce, as of editing this video, I'm only 71, only. As expected, in the gym you'll find towels. It's nice that they also provide you with earphones here for your treadmill and cycling machine. They've got a relatively large changing room here with sauna and shower. The swimming pool is indoor, considering Chicago can be a very cold place during winter, it's reasonable they haven't got an outdoor pool here, but it's a very tiny indoor pool. So here comes to the end of the hotel component of this video. Overall, we really enjoy our stay here. The location is fantastic, the staff are friendly, the club lounge is beautiful, but we wish there's more hot food options like bacon, waffles, whatever. The room design is contemporary and luxury at the same time with the golden features and marble floor in the bathroom. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Keep watching for a Q&A towards the end. If you're new to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe and bell button so you won't miss out on my weekly upload. Now it's time to say goodbye to Chicago as we head to Boston on Chicago is definitely one of my favorite cities in the world. I'll definitely go back soon. Hello there, welcome back to another Q&A. Haven't done this in a while. So I'll start off with question number one. Can you see yourself as a full-time YouTuber in the future reviewing flights as a Korea? At the moment, that's what I do anyway. So it's kind of like a full-time job for me. Uh, not full-time in a sense that it's a nine to five job, Monday to Friday, but uh, whenever I've got time, I'll be, you know, reading comments, replying to DMs on Instagram, etc. So I'm enjoying it so far, so I possibly wouldn't rule out a possibility, but um, if something comes out, I'll take it, I guess. When would you fly with Greater Bay Airlines? I'm not sure, so for those who aren't that familiar with Greater Bay Airlines, it's a new startup airline in Hong Kong. They just had their first inaugural flight to Bangkok not too long ago, but obviously flights to Hong Kong are so limited at the moment, and I think Bangkok's the only destination so far, so uh, when would I do it? I'm really not sure. I don't think uh, I'll do Hong Kong to Bangkok anytime soon anyway. The reason why you always travel every day. So first of all, I don't actually travel every day. Uh, it may seem like it because of my presence on social media or 
YouTube, but obviously when I do fly, for example, I did, uh, I just had a trip to Bali. I took seven flights in total, including transits and stopover in Singapore. Uh, and you know, it's almost like flying every day during that trip. But when I spread out on YouTube, that's seven weeks of content. So I don't actually fly every day. Like I'm now having a three week break from flying, but I'm still posting videos on YouTube. How is Lily? Hope she's doing well. Well, thank you so much for asking, Lily. Uh, she's doing just fine there, I guess. She's playing with the uh, laundry ball. Silly Lily. Uh, how do you travel as a dual citizen? So I have two passports. And um, for those who don't know, the Hong Kong Chinese passport and my UK UK passport. So, how do I use them? Uh, when I go to America, for example, I would use my UK passport so I, uh, because I won't need a visa, just a ESTA. Um, when I go to Vietnam, for example, UK passport because uh, no visa required as well, whereas um, Hong Kong passport, I would need one. Uh, when I go to Bali, I used my Hong Kong passport, so Indonesia. Uh, so they both had the same requirements uh, for UK and Hong Kong passports, but um, um, eventually I would run out of stamps with my UK passports because I use that more so. Whenever they have the same requirements uh, and require, require a stamp, I would use a Hong Kong passport. Have you tried to sit in a cockpit after landing? Uh, I've tried going in, like I've gone in before, but I've actually not sat uh, sat down before. What are you studying and what do you want to do when you uh, finish it? So I finished my aviation degree, aviation management degree, November last year and I actually have my graduation ceremony in two weeks time. Uh, my parents are coming over from Hong Kong as well. Um, so what do I want to do after, so basically now, I'm just doing YouTube for now, and as I said earlier, if anything comes up, like a good offer, I might take it. But I'm not too rushed at the moment, like I'm not really, you know, actively looking for a job. I'm kinda lazy now, and I'm enjoying my life. <laughs> um, hi Jaden, um, can you share some travel must-have apps? Um, so, obviously I think every, uh, person has a weather app on their phone for looking for airfares and stuff maybe not necessarily app more like a site but I always you know look on Google flights Google uh, a sky scanner for you know a good idea in your brain what's what's good what routes doing uh, what routes are cheap and what period as well um, obviously you want to sign up to some airline newsletter as well for example if you live in Virgin Australia oh sorry if you live in Australia Virgin Australia has a happy hour sale every um, Thursday Jetstar I think they do it Friday they call it the uh, frenzy Friday sale so sign up for a newsletter for airlines that have uh, their home base near you um, hotel as well sign up to some hotel hotel site newsletter because um, sometimes like I'm with Hilton they offer great offer sometimes like um, double or triple points and those points can go towards your future stays so yeah thank you so much for watching this Q&A Lily's right there don't know what she's doing and I'll see you next Monday or Thursday bye ladies and gentlemen welcome to Boston for your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your cabin baggage stowed until the seatbelt sign has been turned off.